coming from an experimental dance background um, and uh, being creative, it's spontaneity that really spurs um, my love for life. And whenever moments become really kind of dry or dead um, or depressing, I usually change my voice. So every time um, um, I might walk out of a door, I might change my accent. And um, it, it came from a, a love for exploring the world of sound. I was born with only one ear that was hearing, and that actually exploded me into the world of sound and to be able to take sounds apart in minute detail. Um, and that led me to explore languages. Cantonese. Cantonese, it's not hard at all. It's Cantonese. It's even in the name of the language itself that we can tone with ease. It's not called cannot tonese for a reason. <laughs> it's really unbelievable that um, I'm standing here today talking about Cantonese because if you talk to anyone who knew me before 2015, Chinese was the last language that I wanted to learn because I was too busy getting excited about the rest of the world. I was really lucky to have been brought up in um, international schools throughout my childhood. And we were surrounded by people who were from different countries. And since I was five, I really enjoyed meeting friends from different countries. So I learned phrases like, No, tege tege mu stinga so. And, No, i pari no mu no re. In Korean, which meant, You're very ugly and your teeth are very yellow. Which <laughs> was very funny when we were seven years old. I still remember the friend who taught me how to say, Apka nam kya hai? And um, skipping to when I moved to England, we frequented a Turkish restaurant almost every other day. I akshamlar nasisim, i imsim. And my first friend I met when I was interviewing at the Ruskin, he was Polish. His name was Kostek. And he showed me a drawing. I said, what's that mean? Um, and there was this letter, L, with the stroke across it. And he said, that letter is L. Pan Maswa, Mr. Butter. It was a little yellow cartoon character with big googly eyes. And over the years, we developed a strong friendship. And I often went to Poland with him. And he taught me more and more Polish. So one day, we were at a club in uh, Warsaw. And he, I initiated him to translate the song for me. Uh, one more time by Daft Punk. So it goes, Yes, Gerard's Benjamin Shebavich, O tak, O tak, Jemmy Tanchich. And it was resonating with people on that level in their home language. That was the equivalent of the meaning of life for me. It's an experience that can be more precious than a plane ticket. 
to go to a new city because essentially you're visiting a part of their heart and their home. And so Cantonese. Two years ago, I found myself um, teaching Cantonese in Berkeley while I was studying dance therapy. And this friend um, was teaching Portuguese. It suddenly dawned on me that one of the most important things about tonal languages is that if you use a different tone, it's another meaning. So it was really important for me to show him exactly where the tones started and stopped. I learned how to speak Putonghua without having to deal with any of the Chinese characters. Because there is this really great consistent system where you read the words, you look at the symbols, and you know exactly how to say it. Why wasn't there an equivalent system for Cantonese? Without a lot of numbers and extraneous symbols above and below the letters, and letters that imply a tonal change. There are even tonal accents that try to differentiate between tones that are different. I thought, all of this is so absurd. And yet, on one hand, you have people who don't know how to say Hong Kong in the local language. So I'm going to make sure all of you in here do. I'm going to show you by putting out your hand. One hand is your tonal device. You get a finger from the other hand. Do, re, mi, fa, so. In just five tones, you can say the entire Cantonese and Putonghua language. I found that the nine tones actually fall within the five levels. While I was trying to notate exactly where the tones were for my friend Sebastian, I notated the scale all the way from do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. But actually, the whole language only existed within do, re, mi, fa, sol. And at some point, we needed to write tone symbols because it would be inconvenient to have to draw the tone chart out every time. So out of curiosity, I plotted the symbols out for Putonghua. No, 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 no. And so both languages turned out to exist within Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So. And at some point, I looked at my hand and said, well, if it was always so much brain work to try and remember these tones, it could be much easier if we rem remembered certain movement patterns with the sense of touch. So let's practice this together. Hong Kong, the legendary fragrant harbor. Hong Kong. Hong Gong. Now, how about some words about where we are today? Tun Mun, Lingnan University. How do you say that in Cantonese? Tun Mun. 
perfect. <laughs> Lingnan University. Lingnan Dai Hok. Lingnan Dai Hok. Lingnan Big School. Big School meaning university. Now, you never know when you might need a cup, cup of coffee. <laughs> Get your phones out. So please, um, goi, um, goi, yat bui, yi cafe. Please, one cup of hot coffee. Um, goi yat bui yi cafe. Um, goi yat bui yi cafe. Can you hear the song in the phrase? And actually. From now on, if you listen to the musicality of people speaking, even in English, na 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 na, there's a certain song to it, na 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 na. And saying Cantonese without tones is the equivalent of singing songs without the melody. Mispronouncing Cantonese words is like saying Merry Christmas as Merry Tristmas. We don't have the CH sound in Cantonese. We still see chow mein on menus instead of cao mein, which I would spell with TS. So saying Cantonese without the tones and the right pronunciation is a total killjoy without the true Cantonese spirit. Like singing, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Was there any Christmas spirit in that? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the language is not called Cantonese or Cantonese. It's Cantonese. Tonal languages are amongst the world's most difficult languages to learn, as quoted by the Foreign Service, Foreign Service Institute for Diplomat Training, as the languages requiring the most amount of hours to learn. With the Cantonese method, that might change because now Cantonese, Putonghua, Thai, and Vietnamese can be contained on your hand. E, er, san, su, wu, liu, qi, ba, jiu, shi. Thai. Ning song sam si ha hok chet bet gao si. Vietnamese. Mu hai ba nam bai. I forgot the phrase. Oh no. <laughs> Dam chin moi. One to ten. On your hand. Think about it. 